Okay, is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, next we will uh, study about recirculating ball rack and sector steering gearbox. So this is also same as that of a uh, recirculating ball and a rock lever, but here it uses a sector type steering. So this is the sector gear shown here. So it is in the shape of a gear. So this is like a gear cut in into three teeth so that is how it is mounted so uh, it is not a, a roller it is not a roller here so it is connected to a sector gear shown here and also in the same way there is balls provided steel balls provided onto the worm gear that is shown here so this is the worm gear and the worm gear uh, moves the nut and the nut has significant teeth on its surface, which is in mesh with the sector gear shown here. So it is connected to a pit, uh, pitman arm, or it's called the drop arm. And uh, the drop arm is uh, connected to the sector gear shown here. So if you take it as a full circle here, it is a part of a gear. So if it is a full circle, it is a gear. And a part of that gear is shown here. So it is in the shape of a gear, okay, but only has three teeth. It has three teeth, which is in mesh with the teeth provided on the nut of the uh, recirculating ball rack sector gearbox. So it is known as a ball rack. So this portion, this nut portion is known as a ball rack. So what happens is that when the steering column rotates, when the steering column rotates, this ball slides inside the worm, worm shaft. This sliding motion is used for smooth movement of the worm inside the ball nut rack. For the smooth movement only, the balls are provided. Additionally, the ball also provides a significant, not greater, but a significant uh, movement of the uh, rack onto this worm wheel. Okay, it provides a, a movement, uh, up and down movement of the ball nut rack, uh, thereby producing a uh, oscillatory or to and fro motion of the sector gear which is in mesh with the ball nut rack yeah that is how the uh, working is done so it consists of a ball nut rack a sector gear which is connected to a pitman arm and inside the ball nut rack ball steel balls are present and it is present inside the grooves of the worm gear that is shown here okay this is the construction and in working terms you can see the gear shaft is rotated and on rotation it is meshed with the ball nut rack and the balls are passed through the are in the ring shaped and passed through the grooves of the worm gear and due to that due to the depending upon the direction of rotation the ball, uh, ball nut rack moves upwards or downwards when looking at this point of view okay and due to this motion a to and fro motion is transmitted to the sector gear which transmits to the pitman arm so the pitman arm also obtains a translatory motion so that is how the working is done now let's look at the explanation so to reduce friction the conventional screw and nut threads so we have to look at screw and nut so this is the 
this is the screw and nut uh, gearbox and to reduce friction the conventional screw and nut threads are replaced by semi circular spiral grooves to reduce friction the conventional screw and nut threads are replaced by semi circular spiral grooves so in a thread we were giving uh, it uh, we have seen it in the shape of a teeth the threads were provided and that provides significant load onto the um, onto the nut nut provided in the screw and nut steering gearbox but when compared with that you can see here the ball nut rack is in mesh with the balls provided inside the grooves of the worm gear so it is in mesh with the balls rather than the threads of the worm gear so balls are coming into contact with the ball nut rack then these grooves are machined externally around the cylindrical shape shaft which is known as worm and similar grooves is machined internally through the nuts so in a shaft we are grooving externally so you can see it is external the threads are external in the case of a worm gear while in the case of the nut grooves are engraved inside inside the nut so it is in the inside uh, only in this manner can we give it in a perfect mesh so in a nut the grooves are provided internally while in the shaft the grooves are provided externally next engagement of worm and nut is obtained by a lodging a series of steel balls between the two sets of matching semicircular spiral grooves so when we are looking at this you can see here there is a semicircle here you can see the semicircle of the worm gear while you can see a semicircle of the uh, ball nut rack here so it is all in semi circles and when this comes into contact so you can see the worm gear there will be a semi circle here also there is a semi circle on the ball nut rack so this both hemispheres constitute a complete circle wherein the ball fits in okay that is how engagement is done so engagement is obtained by lodging a series of steel balls between the two sets of matching semicircular spiral grooves so uh, it is present in between two sets of hemispheres you can see the hemisphere this is also hemisphere it is here also and the ball is lodged in between okay next there are two separate ball circuits within the ball nut and when the steering wheel and worm rotates the ball rotates in the grooves against the nut this causes the nut to move along the worm so there are two ball circuits in the ball nut okay two ball circuits nothing but one circuit in which the ball enters and another circuit in which the ball exits so these are two circuits okay how the ball enters and exits two circuits of a ball and the movement of this ball results in the movement of the nut okay the movement of the ball along the uh, worm wheel or the worm gear significantly moves the ball nut so that is what is known as here it is shown here this causes the nut to move along the worm due to the motion of the balls then one outer face of the nut is machined in the shape of a teeth forming a gear rack so here it is shown the gear rack but in this case you can see in the recirculating ball and nut a rocker river we are giving a guide slot so we are giving a glide slot instead of a sector shown here so a sector is shown here so it has a multiple teeth on its surface the nut has multiple teeth on its surface and motion from the nut is transferred to the drop arm 
via a tooth sector shaft which meshes with the rack teeth so that linear mo movement of the nut is converted back to rotary motion by the sector and shaft so how does the ball nut rack moves so ball nut rack moves when looking in this figure ball nut uh, rack moves up and down that is in a linear motion but even if ball nut rack moves in a translatory motion the sector moves in an inclined manner okay like shown here so it is moving in an inclined manner okay in an, a small axial, axial uh, rotation in a small axial rotation it moves in the same way also this sector of gear moves in such a direction so only the worm gear moves in up and down translatory motion while this moves in a rockering uh, small angle basis okay then an advantage of this type of steering gear is that rack and sector provide the drop, drop arm with a large angular movement than most mechanism most other types of mechanism so what does that say so you can see in a recirculating ball nut and rocker lever the maximum distance the guide slot can move or the maximum distance it can move to turn the vehicle is inside this guide slot so it depends upon the distance of how much the guide slot can move so that is the amount at which the tires can be turned or uh, the amount at which uh, the vehicle can be turned that is the maximum amount and here also in the worm wheel you can see the sector can move only up to the portion where the worm threads come into contact so this is the last part where the worm wheel comes into contact and that is the maximum amount the sector or the roller can turn so when compared with these things you can see that a sector or the ball nut can move across the width of this worm wheel so depending upon the worm wheel it can move significantly the sector gear can move accordingly with the ball nut rack so according to how the ball nut rack moves the sector gear can also move so this gives us a large turning radius okay it gives us much more larger turning radius than compared with our previous three types of steering gearbox so this is why uh, this type of rack and pinion or rack uh, uh, recirculating ball rack and sector gearboxes are commonly used in nowadays okay so it gives us larger angular movement of the drop arm or the sector that gives us more turning radius of the tires in the vehicle then the overall forward and reverse efficiencies are slightly lower than other recirculating ball mechanism so we have studied about recirculating ball uh, nut and a rocker lever system so when compared with uh, other uh, even other types of uh, recirculating ball mechanisms are present uh, rather than the two that we have discussed here so others are there and when comparing with those all the efficiency of recirculating ball uh, and a sector steering gearbox is um, the lowest so you can see here the forward and reverse efficiencies would be 70 and 45 percentage only so 70 percentage in the forward direction that is in the first second top gears uh, and only 45 percentage in the reverse gear but it is better than screw and nut uh, mechanisms wherein the efficiency is much more lesser than recirculating body okay so that is how uh, 
the recirculating ball uh, rack and sector steering gear box works so so this is how it looks here you can see and this is the cross section of it so you can see here there is that tapered bearing that is shown here this is the tapered bearing this is the steering shaft the worm and the pathway for uh, the bolts to go so you can it will go here come through here and it will then cycle on so uh, according to the movement of the bolts and uh, the steering wheel uh, sorry the worm gear the rack moves to and fro the rack moves either to the right or to the left direction thereby providing us with a to and fro oscillatory motion of the sector okay so that is a recirculating ball and rack uh, sector gearbox next we will look the need for power assisted steering so these uh, steering mechanisms that I have explained before are all mechanical parts. Okay, they are not using any assisting mechanisms for uh, the turning of the vehicle or steering conditions. So the problem with that is nothing but due to completely more manual uh, situations of control, the vehicle. Uh, will be very harder to control okay due to that uh, problem we are using a power assisted steering mechanism wherein we use a hydraulic fluid present inside a cylinder and which is pumped to the uh, mechanism steering mechanism to gain much more power output with uh, than compared to the conventional method. So we are giving uh, a small force at the steering wheel and we are obtaining a larger force at the wheels. So that is the basic function of a power assisted uh, system and basic need for power assisted systems we will discuss now. So the first point with manual steering, a reduction in input effort on the steering wheel rim is achieved by lowering the steering gearbox ratio. But this has the side effect of increasing the number of steering wheel turns from lock. So maneuvering of a steering will take longer. So in manual steering, steering gearbox, I have already told you in a steering gearbox, gear reduction is done. So what is gear reduction? So instead of using a uh, higher gear, we are, I told you that 12 is to 1 and 22 is, 28 is to 1 is the gear ratios, uh, gear reduction ratios in uh, small and heavy vehicles respectively. And this reduction uh, is one of the way we are reducing the load in the steering gear uh, gearbox for maneuvering the vehicle but still it uh, it has a side effect of uh, locking uh, and steering will uh, steering uh, maneuverability will be taking much longer the driver's expectancy for faster driving and cornering makes power assisted steering desirable and in some cases essential if the driver's ability to handle the vehicle is ma is to match its performance so when we are looking at a vehicle at a performance wise you can note that at higher gear ratios uh, that is at uh, sorry at uh, lower gear ratios that is at the full speed conditions and uh, top gear conditions uh, the performance of the vehicle is much greater because of less fuel economy and uh, leaner air fuel mixtures present inside the engine so at greater speeds 
we will face uh, a problem of uh, less stability and controlling ability so when you are taking a corner or cornering situation the vehicle tends to slip outwards okay and when the speed is greater greater will be the centripetal force acting on the vehicle and the vehicle tends to slip outwards from the corner so uh, we have to uh, reduce the speed okay to match the cornering eff effect so in a manual steering gearbox setup it will take a significant time to turn the wheels to match the corner curve okay to match the corner curve we will take significant time and effort to turn the wheels so we have to reduce the speed significantly low for turning that curve thereby reducing the efficiency and the performance of the engine okay that is what happens in a manual transmission uh, and in the case of a power assisted steering mechanism we are uh, when we are giving a small force of rotation itself we are get, achieving greater turning radius so this can be done in significantly more lower gears uh, than compared to a manual steering gearbox thereby increasing the performance of the engine when compared with the conventional steering gearbox so that is what that point states so it is comparing performance and cornering characteristics with the power assisted system and also conventional steering gearbox system now in the next point we will see that power assistance when incorporated on passenger cars reduces the driver's input to something like 25 to 30 percentage of the total work needed to maneuver it so when you are maneuvering the vehicle uh, without the assist of uh, power assisted system we have to give 25 to 30 percentage more total work that is we have to give more work when compared to power assisted system so when we are comparing with the power assisted system 25 to 30 percentage of total work is reduced okay uh, when we are turning the vehicle or steering the vehicle uh, so this will help a lot when a driver is driving a car and he will get tired much less when compared to the manual steering bear box setup next with heavy trucks the hydraulic power assist amounts to 80 to 85 percentage of the total steering effort so a heavy truck is the most uh, uh, heavier and harder to maneuver when compared with other light commercial vehicles because of its load and uh, significant load increase when we are using cargos so uh, due, due to that uh, steering of a heavy vehicle is much uh, harder and to reduce that we are using hydraulic power servo assist motors and this uh, even reduces the work uh, from 80 to 85 percentage of the total steering effort when compared with the manual uh, steering gearbox system Consequently, a more direct steering gearbox reduction can be used to provide a more precise steering uh, response. So a direct steering gearbox reduction can be used. So uh, we have seen uh, in nowadays um, more heavy vehicles such as Bharat Benz and all, you can see how powerful the engine is and also how it can be used to uh, steer the vehicle with the use of hydraulic powers so you have to uh, give only less effort when we are comparing with all the tipper lorries that we can uh, see in the roads next the steering wheel movement from lock to lock will then be reduced approximately from 3.5 to 4 turns down to 2.5 to 3 turns for power and uh, sorry manual and power assistance steering arrangements so this is nothing but lock to lock means 
when you are turning to the right the maximum uh, turns that we have to give to reach the maximum right position of the wheel so you know that uh, the steering wheel has to be rotated twice in our uh, vehicles to obtain the most rightest position or the most leftest position of the wheels so that is what is the lock to lock so after that the wheel cannot be turned or the steering wheel cannot be turned that is the lock position so for the lock to lock moment of the steering wheel in manual uh, steering system we had to provide 3.5 to 4 turns to obtain the maximum lock in either directions okay we had to give 3.5 to 4 turns approximately 4 turns we had to give so you had to rotate the steering wheel in four times in this uh, direction that you have to turn for maximum turn but in the case of power assistance system it is reduced to 2.5 to 3 turns approximately 2.5 we have been seen in smaller vehicles and when you are coming to suvs and all it will approximately take about three turns three turns basically it is not uh, there now about 2.5 only is obtained because uh, you can see that when we are turning the vehicle itself two rotations is enough that is up, um, exactly equal to 2.5 where what you what rotation you have been given is exactly equal to 2.5 and in maybe in the case of uh, uh, more heavier vehicles we are getting about uh, three turns either uh, otherwise it is always 2.5 then the last point says that the amount of power assistance supplied to the steering linkage to the effort put in by the driver is normally restricted so that the driver experiences the tire interaction with the ground under the varying driving so, uh, condition. As a result, there is sufficient resistance transmitted back to the driver's steering wheel from the road wheels to enable the driver to sense or feel the steering input requirements needed effectively to steer the vehicle. So, uh, in a manual gearbox, when we are trying, when the vehicle is at rest, so we have not started the vehicle or the vehicle has not started moving, in a manual system, when we try to maneuver or turn the wheels, at a rest position it will be harder maybe even it will not budge it will not even move so for uh, but in the case of a hydraulic system that does not have to be operated by means of a battery or power uh, without that uh, we can even move the tires because of the power assisting the steering mechanism so uh, as a result, uh, in a manual transmission, when we are trying to turn, due to the friction and the load of the vehicle and the steering gearbox, the tires cannot change its direction. But in the case of a power assisted system, uh, due to significant power pro produced by the hydraulic system or the power assisted system, it can easily turn the vehicle against the road resistance or and the load of the vehicle so that is how power assisting system is uh, advantageous when compared with the manual system and this is why also we have to uh, provide power assisted steering system in nowadays system uh, nowadays driving conditions uh, and uh, reduces the reduce the ease of di driver operation in the vehicle. So you can see uh, here the uh, reduction ratios that are provided here. So the first three conditions are gear ratios of uh, the gear reductions of steering gearbox. Um, in manual steering reduction so this will be the 15 is to 1 so this is the force at the steering wheel how much force is obtained at the steering wheel is shown here and this is the force at the end of steering drop up 
so how much force is obtained at the drop arm and how much force we have to give at the steering wheel to make the necessary turn so we can see the highest value is 200 and is shown in 15 is to 1 and this is the this three are manual steering reduction ratios and this can be screw and nut uh, gear um, gear steering mechanism and this can be the next recirculating and this can also be another uh, recirculating worm and wheel or recirculating so these are all reduction ratios and you can see how significantly the load is decreasing okay the load is decreasing here so the force you have to give is decreasing here so when it comes here it is approximately equal to uh, about 180 okay this is approximately equal to 180 and a little above and um, when it comes here it is almost equal to uh, 140 approximately equal to 140 and then when we are going to power assist system it is significantly lowered and uh, about 60 it is about 60 not 60 about 50 something it is reduced so that much force only you have to give for at the steering wheel to make the force at the steering drop up so this is the maximum force so we are, the maximum force generated is 6000 that is used for locking the wheel so when we are turning to the right or the leftmost position this is the uh, maximum force that is obtained at the end so we are only giving how much we are only giving 60 newton here we are only giving 60 newton but we are obtaining 6000 uh, newton power at the wheels but in the case of this you can see that um, 200 we are giving uh, 200 newton power we are giving at the steering wheel and we are only obtaining 5000 folds at the steering drop arm rather than the 6000 for other conditions so this is the screw and nut type which is having the lowest and the hardest uh, steering gear ratios and uh, that only gives us uh, this uh, amount of force okay so when we look at all this the effects of reducing the driver's input uh, effort at the steering wheel with different steering gear overall gear ratios to overcome an output opposing resistance at the steering box is shown in this one okay this is how a hydraulic system uh, of uh, power assisted steering is done okay this one we will discuss in the next class i will wind up today's class